it's time to make a soup. And you're thinking, in this season, you're not going to eat any food? No, I'm not. Because I said yesterday, especially when it comes to soups, it's really not about the heat. Yes, I know we're used to that. And it's very comforting. And we've got to blow it when it's hot so that we don't burn our mouth and that we can ingest it and enjoy it. But what really is warming us up on the inside are our spices. So this is a creamy curried cauliflower soup. I'm using the blender. I did take about a cup of the um, small diced cauliflower raw. About a head gives me about um, a medium sized head. It gives me about four cups, maybe four to five cups. Once I remove all the green leaf and you know, the core, you're going to lose some of that. You can use the green leaf. You don't have to, you can put that in the soup too, if you want it. But this is going to give me, I measured out four cups here and I'm going to see how much I want in the soup. Because what I did do was I took about a cup and I just seasoned it with a little bit of the curry spice that I'm using and a little bit of paprika and a little sea salt. And I put it in the dehydrator. I did put a little bit of um, olive oil on it, not too much tossed that together and slipped it in the dehydrator on 115 degrees for about two hours. So it now has more of a chewy texture to it than just a raw. And I'm going to put that in the bowl and I'm going to pour the soup over it, or you can garnish it on top. So there are a lot of different things you can do, but I will get very um, satiated with this soup. Sometimes you want more bulk in the soup even creamy soups. So that's a way I can do it with uh, the dehydrator to just take off some of that rawness, but still maintain the live full enzymes intact in the food that I'm really going for while I'm preparing these types of food. So let's get started. I made a base of cashew milk and I took one cup soaked cashews. If you watched any of my Sessions, you know, I soak my cashews about two to four hours, rinse, drain, and rinse. And then to this, I added one cup of the soaked cashews to three cups of water. Typically, a nut milk recipe will be anywhere from three to four cups of water, filtered water, to that one cup of your soaked nuts, whether it's almonds or cashews or hazelnut or whatever you're using. That's pretty much that recipe. If you want it thicker, like a creamer for your coffee or even your tea, you'll lessen the liquid, the water content. So I could take it down to um, two to one. So I could just use two cups of uh, the water to one cup of the cashews. If I want to take it down and make a cashew cream, where I'm almost like a whipped cream, a heavy cream, then I'm going to go one to one. And if I'm going to do a cashew cheese, I'm going to go one to one half cup of water. And I'm going to work that and put my probiotic in it and I'm going to let it ferment. So here I have two cups of the cashew milk. You could do almond milk. You could do oat milk. Obviously, no flavoring if, you, if you're buying shelf bought, right? You could do soy milk. You could do water, but I find water in just my soups. I would use water and then put spices in them since I'm not using a broth or a stock that I would have heated. I'm not doing any of that. I want all the enzymes. So there's a lot of thinking process here with what you're doing. So here I'm just going to add, um, yeah, I'm going to use one and a half cups. I just want to see where I want to go and how thick. I want this a hearty soup, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take, while I cut up the whole head, I can reserve it and use it in salads and all. So I'm just going to see where I want to go with this. So I'm going to then take my cauliflower. I know I've got four cups in here, so I'm probably going to do like two cups to the one and a half cups of the cashew. I am going to add also some lemon juice. I just fresh squeeze one lemon, a medium-sized lemon, gave me about 
a fourth a cup of lemon juice. So I'm going to use two tablespoons to start because I know I see people, you know, they're like, okay, here are the ingredients. Just put everything in the blender and blend it up. I have no control over adjusting if something is too much. So while that is nice, I get it. In the kitchen, in the cafe, that is not how we do it. We've got the recipe, but we have steps to getting to where we want to go. Especially I've worked in, as I shared in my other session, I've worked in two raw vegan restaurants. So there were a lot of techniques that we used to make those raw foods taste like they had been possibly cooked with um, heat or maybe even uh, fried but we didn't. So it isn't always about just dumping everything in a blender and blending it up. Even my smoothies, I don't always do like that. If I'm in a hurry in the morning and I need to take it to go or I'm have it before I get out for my day and I know that recipe, I might be fine with it. But I'm always tinkering to get more refinement, more refinement. And especially with what we call raw food that I like to call live, meaning the enzymes are intact because now this isn't tasting raw to you anymore now that I dehydrated it. And I didn't dehydrate it like the kale chips I did yesterday to a crispy, crunchy, crunchy is a better word, um, point. So there's different layers of cooking that we do with food that is not including heat. As I always say, I'm going to start the blender. I won't speak over it. So if you'd like to mute your volume, please do so. check it. And so this would be also the way I would start making my cauliflower mashed potatoes. Uh, adding less water or, or even milk would be what we'd be using here. But I could take a different turn and make cashew cauliflower mashed potatoes, which I've done and it's delicious. This is looking good. It's got, you know, that puree consistency that I want. And I right now have two cups. So that's matching what I've put in. But I want to, because if you use all of it, like I said, you're going to get to four cups. So four servings, a cup, right? But if you want to have two cups per serving or a cup and a half, that's going to lessen your yield. So I am going to not throw things around. I am going to add more of my cashew milk, all of it. So that was two cups. Now write this in the recipe. And then I'm going to go for I have a little bit left, but I'm going to blend it and see where I'm at. And then I'm going to start adding my seasonings, which is my curry. And you know, curry, depending on whose curry you're purchasing, if you go to India or other countries that make curry, it could be very different. Your basic may be your cumin and you can have your coriander and your chili. And oftentimes you're going to have some ginger in there, but then somebody could add some nutmeg and some cinnamon, some garlic powder, some, did I say paprika already? So it can be very different depending on what part of the country you're in, the north, the south, the east, the west. But this is cumin, coriander, a little paprika, a little cinnamon, a little garlic, um, and chili. 
So we're going to get that in there. I'm going to add, oh, and it has some turmeric also in the blend, but I'm going to add some more turmeric because I want to get that really nice color. But I also want the benefits of turmeric, which are anti-inflammatory. All of these spices are very warming. They're very warming, right? I am going to add a little bit black pepper, but I'm going to taste it up. But I've made this before, so I know how I like it. I am adding miso, which is a fermented product high in amino acids, said to be good for gut health. And this is a chickpea amino, uh, excuse me, um, miso. Most misos are soy-based, or I should say classically. Misos have been soy-based as an Asian um, ingredient, but you can get chickpea. So you can um, stay away if you don't want soy or you can't tolerate soy. You can get barley. Um, so there are different misos out there that you can look for, but it is considered a raw. I am using a tamari that is gluten-free. If you're using, say, mamasoyu, that isn't gluten-free. They both are raw. They're both unpasteurized. And this is, um, you know, again... We know soy, but tamari or namasoyu are, are different. The tamari is the gluten-free. And because I want this recipe gluten-free, I'm going to use the tamari. I already said I used some lemon juice. And then I'm going to add some avocado. So if you have a nut intolerance, you could take out the cashew milk and use a non-nut milk. or And you could just use your avocado for that added creaminess and the good fat content. And then, like I said, make a water tonic or herbal water, you know, putting some of your herbs in your water and letting it infuse to add more flavor. Okay, I'm gonna blend now more. So mute if you like. <laughs> just when I, um, it's just habit pushing the food, whatever I'm making down off the sides to incorporate back in. It has a real nice consistency. I do want to blend it a little more. I'm going to hold off adding my avocado till the end because I don't want to over process the avocado and the good fats, but I am going to, at this point, add the other ingredients. I do want to just taste test and see where my lemon is in this. So I'm going to add the entire juice that came up to one fourth cup. You'll see that in the recipe listing. And if it says a medium a lemon in some recipes, people don't say how much cup wise or volume wise. They just say what it is like a head of um, cauliflower. Well, a medium-sized head is probably going to give you, once you cut it up and take away the greens and all, probably four cups. But a large-sized head is probably going to give you four to six cups. I mean, it would be pushing higher, right? So I'm always like measuring or looking up, well, what do you mean by head? What does that mean in my recipe by volume of measurement for people? So I've got the lemon juice. I'm going to go ahead and add the tamari. I'm going to add the miso. And this is uh, two tablespoons I'm using of the tamari and two tablespoons I'm using of the miso. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of the curry. <laughs> I know I like this, so I don't have to really measure there. And if it's your first time and you're not familiar with curry, you know, use a tablespoon first and see where you go. This is just a teaspoon of turmeric. Again, with the black pepper, I'm using half a teaspoon. You could start with a fourth, but I kind of know what I'm going to get. And then we'll blend this and then I'll add the avocado. 
So just because we have a blender doesn't mean everything should go the whole kitchen sink in the blender, blend it up, and that's what you get. That's not how I cook, but you could do what you like. <laughs> looking good it's nice and it has a nice body and then i'm going to add the dehydrated cauliflower to it but i do want to test before i put the avocado in it's got a beautiful consistency mm. Mm. That's really nice. Okay. That's really nice. It's really warming. And then I'm going to take my... So I'm also going to just split up my avocado and not just put that whole half in. Just cut it up. I don't need to use a knife. You could also take some of your avocado. I have like an avocado a day. It's such a great fruit for my diet. And of course, while I'm on high raw, you know, I'm incorporating it. I'll mix it with mango for my fruit salad in the morning. I'll put mango, blueberries, and avocado. You may think it doesn't taste good. It's really good. I'll put a little lime juice and a dash of cayenne. I'm really set. So we've got now that half avocado, but I was going to say you could also take and cube it, small dice it and put some on top as a garnish with the other things you might be garnishing with. You could also do that with the cauliflower that I dehydrated. If you don't have um, a dehydrator and you're not trying to go all raw, but you want to try this recipe, you can just roast a little bit of cauliflower and just leave the florets. Just get the small florets, break them small, put a little bit of um, olive oil or grapeseed oil or avocado oil on them, just roast them quickly. You don't have to spend a lot of time. High temperature, shorter period of time, little salt, little pepper, and they'll look beautiful on the soup, right? <laughs> taste one more time and then I'm going for dishing. That's perfect. That is what I know this soup can taste like. So I'm going to use this whole amount of, well actually I'm going to take about half of it and I'm going to put the cauliflower at the base. I'm going to leave some to garnish with. So I have about, because I added more things, and we already added the two cups of the cashew milk, and we added about three and a half cups of the cauliflower. I have a little bit, of, a little bit left. So I now have a volume of about 34 ounces. So I can easily get... 
four servings out of that, depending on how much I serve myself. And I'm just going to pour that. And you can see just how rich and thick and creamy that is. So you could thin it out if you want it a little. I like it this way. It's really nice. Yep, so I have two cups, two and a half cups left. So you can see just how it's really nice. It is not as thick as cashew or cauliflower mashed potatoes, but it is a creamy, velvety um, soup. I'm going to go ahead and let me do something really quick. I don't want to keep putting my hands in it, although they're clean and I'm eating it. I'm going to go ahead and Put the rest of the cauliflower right on top. You know how I like to make food pretty before I eat it or before I serve it to you to eat. And then I have some beautiful microgreens. I have cilantro and I have, which I used yesterday on the burger, um, radish microgreens. So I am going to really, they're so nutrient dense. I like to really present with them, garnish with them, and get people to eat more microgreens. So, you know, it's all in the presentation and how you introduce something to your family or yourself if you haven't had it before. So I'm going to just kind of do them side by side like that and we want some height. And then I also like to add my seeds. So yesterday in the nut burger, there were walnuts, pecans, I had soaked them all overnight, and sunflower seeds. Tomorrow I'll be making a sunflower seed pate. And I'm gonna show you how to lean into it like a tuna, which I spell T-O-O-N-A, and then you can have it on salads, you can make a sandwich, you can put it in, you know, a, a bread pocket, whether it's raw or not, it really moves or tastes like a tuna. I've had people not have an aversion to tuna and not want to try it because they said it smelled and looked too much like tuna. But I am today going to use, I just put these, they're raw. I put a little bit of oil, whether it's olive oil, or avocado oil or grapeseed oil, season them. And you can use all kinds of seasonings, not just salt, and put them in the dehydrator and just let them get dried. And you have this beautiful garnish and you have all this nutrient density. Pumpkin seeds are great for the amino content, the fiber content, the crunchy content. And I think that does it. I don't think I want to add anything else to this bowl of creamy curried cauliflower soup. So it is soup season. It's been raining and really windy where I'm at. I had to go out earlier today and I was like, I'm ready for this soup. So while it is, it's not cold, right? It's room temperature and more. And if I had kept blending it with this particular blender or any high power blender, even a neutral bullet, you can get it to hot. You know that if you work with that already, but that is not my goal. I don't want to go over 115 degrees, but if you wanted this recipe to be hot, you can make it so, or, and you can put it on the stove and heat it. But I want to show you how, when one says they're eating a raw vegan diet or a live vegan diet, there is so much more that we're eating than one might think of salads and carrots and all the rest. So I'm going to enjoy this. I hope you try it and let me know what you think. Mm -hmm.